Everybody wants to make an extra 5, 10, 100K per month, but very few struggle to make it happen because they just don't know what to focus on. In this video, I'm gonna break down the exact seven step framework that allowed me to become a millionaire by the age of 20 and live a life that I want to live. If you're trying to generate additional income, you need to pay very close attention to what I'm gonna share in this video. So welcome to today's training. Who's been there where you've just been working so hard for so long and you just feel like you're not getting that direction? and you just burn out and frustrated by your business. I know I've been there. We wanna share with you our system today to prevent you from feeling that way. If right now your business has been down a little bit, your profits have been hurting, you can't find high value clients, selling is feeling really, really tough right now, and not enough people are buying, I just wanna let you know that you're not alone. I remember vividly, it was Christmas time and I was at the hospital because my younger brother's disabled. My mom was there, my parents got divorced, so my dad wasn't there, but I actually had a sales call that day because what else am I gonna do you know <laughs> back then a few years ago when all I was doing was working and I remember leaving the hospital early because I had this sales call book and then I got on that sales call and the guy didn't end up becoming a client and I just remember feeling so frustrated and lost and like I should have stayed with my family then I felt all this guilt and that's kind of the moment when I personally knew that something needed to change I don't think that you need to have that rock bottom moment to know that something needs to change but I'm sharing this because I know a lot of people right now are in a position where it's really hard to make sales and to get clients. At Impact School, we've coached more than 1,200 content creators and business owners. And across the board, we're seeing increased refunds, ads not working or converting, team members burnt out, founder being super frustrated by the business, clients disengaging and the revenue decreasing. In case you don't know who I am, my name is Lauren Tickner. And at this point, I've actually scaled my fitness coaching business to multiple six figures in profit per year. I then had a personal branding program, which I took to seven figures per year. And as well, a lead generation agency that I also used exactly the same system that I'll share with you today. I took that to seven figures per year with the seven areas of impact. The beautiful thing about the seven areas of impact is it allows you to thrive. So this is actually one of our members, Marianne. She made 8,000 euros in profit in the year 2021. And then in 2022, she's consistently making more than 100K per month. And now she's well, she's had some months where she's gone above 200K, but she's on average like 150K. Jazz as well, her clients are like disengaging tons. She was always promoting, selling new products and stuff. You can see here that in pounds, she made 130K in profit. And this is thanks to the seven areas of impact. The seven areas of impact is the exact same thing that's landed me on the same stages as Alex Holmosey, Gary V. I've interviewed Grant Cardone. With that said, again, just a few more client results from this. You can see people getting incredible results and I'm sharing this to give you the conviction that you need to see that this works. If you're below 20K per month in consistent cash collected, you may be feeling like, oh, I just can't get enough sales. I'm always trying to find more leads. And I'm oh, man, people just aren't buying my stuff. Typically the reasons why this is happening is because you're lacking authority, so people don't listen to you. You don't have actually enough leads to bring in repeated sales, and you're getting a lot of objections because of the fact that people don't really know who you are or why to trust you. If you're right now below 50K per month, again, it's kind of this problem where it's like, oh my gosh, I need to hire all these people or to do all this stuff, set up all these operations or all this system, but really, problems that we see having helped more than 1,200 companies is that there's no consistent way of bringing in leads without more of you. Client success is dependent on you. You're always looking at what your competitors are doing and your revenue is up and down and unpredictable. So people often say, oh yeah, I make 40 grand a month. But it's more like you made 40K once and now you feel like that's what you make. So you have these false expectations. So the solutions that you start adding to your business are for a company that's larger than yours, which is why you're not getting the help that you need. If you're below 100K per month, inconsistent cash collected, the authority is coming from you. It's hard to replace yourself in marketing. There's missed opportunity from lack of proper sales and lead nurture. Clients come to you because of your brand and sales depends on your closing techniques. And oftentimes there's people problems, which early stage founders don't see, which means that you constantly have frustration with your team. These problems are coming, not because that's the actual problem, but that's because you didn't diagnose the problem properly and fix the right thing. When you fix that one area, it improves all of the other areas. When you operate your business by looking at the seven areas of impact, then you problem solve and prioritize based upon your business's actual bottleneck rather than just like hearing about a new strategy and executing that. 
then you get unstuck and continue to move forward every week, every month. And as Anthony said, I actually do this myself quarterly for impact school. As an example, if you can't find high value clients, it may be that you don't have product market fit. If you're finding selling tough, it may be that you lack authority. And if not enough people are buying from you, then your lead tap may be inefficient. So here are the seven areas of impact. Now, I'm just going to warn you, this is going to look overwhelming. What you're probably going to want to do is like grab your phone, take a picture of this as well. So here are the seven areas of impact across the top there. And then here are the seven levels. So I'm going to go through all of this. We'll start on product just because that's really the cornerstone of your business. That's ultimately why you're in business. It's a thing that you sell. The nothing is really, there's no repeatable way to get client results. If you're doing bespoke work for every client, clients come to you for different things, then you're probably in the nothing stage of product. But that's okay because it just means that you need to productize what you're doing because when you productize what you're doing, life becomes a lot easier, okay? So for products, if you have some methodologies, but all client work is bespoke or manual and it's killing you to deliver, because you have methodologies, right? So that's why you're probably in the validate phase because you've got these methodologies that you know work. So now it's time to validate that. If you don't have methodologies that you know work, then you're in the nothing phase and you would need to put some stuff together to actually be able to validate a process to get repeatable results for clients again and again. So for product, if you're phase three, which is stabilized, right? It means that you have a productized service. So your service that you sell or the item that you sell, the clothing that you sell. I just write productized service because until now, the members that we've been working with have typically been service business. So you've got this thing that you sell and it consistently gets client results repeatedly and 50% or more of your clients or customers are happy to give you testimonials. That's really important because if your clients aren't actually getting the result and if they're not willing to give you testimonials, you don't want to stabilize that. It is not good enough. You must go back to validate and continuously improve until you're at that level. So be really honest with yourself right now. Would 50% of your clients and customers give you a testimonial right now? And if you don't know, well, guess what you need to do? You need to go and ask them for one. It's the easiest way to figure that part out. If 75% of clients would give you testimonials and your product could be sold as a do-it-yourself product because it's a great system, then you're at the systematized level. So you're, you can rank yourself full. Could your clients do it themselves without any talking to you? Be really real about that. Because that means that it's totally systematized. And that's beautiful. Five would be that you're removed from working with clients and clients stay happy. Again, I know there's some people here with physical product businesses. So are you still the one that's actually sketching out how the products need to look? Are you designing the the material are you are you the one that's actually getting there in the trenches working with the manufacturers because if so then you're definitely not at this stage six would be you do not need to review any of your team's client work and 90 percent of clients give you testimonials and then seven would be you get a testimonial from every single client as they're so happy and they rave about your amazing system like every single customer and client anthony you could talk to this for a second anthony here is our head of client experience here at impact school I just want to let you guys know he's the one that I go to when I need help on what we should do strategically at Impact School. Do you remember when we used to literally do like everything and it was just kind of like based upon my knowledge and it was really hard for you and the rest of the team to figure out what to do because it wasn't systematized. Could you just talk to that for a second, how it feels to be like a team member, even though you're, you know, super experienced, like how much chaos it caused, especially when you then began started hiring more consultants and coaches in Impact School. Could you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, you just add more complexity to it when you get to that point. And it's daunting to even put this on a client, let alone a team, because now you you end up creating too much bespoke and not enough of a system where if a client is purchasing essentially what is, what well, they're buying as a result. And the system creates the process to facilitate that result, okay, to facilitate that outcome. And what happens is if you tax your team, essentially, whoever is fulfilling that type of work, if you're in a service, if you're in coaching, consulting, it really doesn't matter. Um, you end up taxing your team because you can't distill the information down to where your team can take it and run with it. And that's a, that's means you're always on an endless hamster wheel trying to figure that out. Yeah, it's really tough because right now you may be thinking, yeah, but it's just me, it's okay. 
But if you want to be in the cycle forever, whereby at one moment you're in a sales call and then the next moment you sell to somebody and then you have to go do the onboarding, all of the bespoke work and everything, you're never able to get your business to a level where it is actually consistently bringing consistent revenue without you then having to do like a ton of manual work. So we operate with the theory of area of impact. Like what is my biggest area of impact right now? Because as the business owner, that is the single thing that you need to be focusing on. People ask me all the time, as a CEO, what should I be doing? (laughs) And then I analyze what they're doing on a day-to-day basis. Anthony can attest to this. And like they're replying to DMs or they're posting on Instagram stories. But it's like, no, somebody else can do that. If you can get the rest of your areas of your business from nothing to validate, to stabilize, to systematize, and then you delegate that, then you are able to constantly look at this chart consistently. And then you're able to always focus on the thing that's going to take you to the next level. Authority, audience, and awareness. That's the AAA, okay? Now, this one is probably the most underlooked out of the seven. Personally, I would say for many people here, we will discover that this is the actual thing that's holding you back. And let me get into it. So nothing would just be that you just don't really have any online audience and authority. So if someone looks at your Facebook page or your Instagram page or your Twitter, it's just like, who is this random person? Okay. Be real with yourself right now. Because even if you've created a load of content and you just don't find that your audience is growing, That's what other people are thinking. It's not what I'm saying is the truth. It's what other people are thinking. Okay, so just be real. Validate for audience, authority, and awareness would be that less than five people each week ask how you can help them them online. Do you right now have five people every single week online asking you how you can help them? So submitting a form on your social media or your website that is directly saying submit this to become my client right obviously i hope your sales copy is better than that just be real with yourself do you actually have five people come to you with intent there's a difference between interest and intent this is a key sales lesson for you right now interest may be like they opt into a freebie or they ask you a question that's cool but there's no intent of them becoming a client i remember back in my fitness days I would literally get hundreds of messages a week from young girls saying like, Lauren, is it okay to eat carbs? Um, If I go to the gym and lift weights, won't I get bulky like a man? I used to get these messages all the time, right? It feels nice because they're reaching out to me for help and everything, but they legitimately had zero intent of becoming a client. So I should not count that. Even though there was hundreds of them, I should not count that in five people each week asking me how I can help them. Stabilize is when it's clear why people should listen to you and what you do from your content. So basically you never have anybody ask you, who are you? And no one ever asks like, what actually do you do? At this stabilized point, how this looks in your life is that you're probably getting invited to speak on other people's podcasts, in other people's events. Maybe you've been contacted by publishers to do books. That's how it looks at that stabilized stage and your audience is most likely growing. You're getting a good amount of new dream client followers every single week. Systematize is when your content and your audience is getting you 10 plus inbound inquiries per week because people want to actually come and work with you as a client. Same thing as before, right? So instead of five, now it's just 10, double. You want to systematize whatever you're doing when it comes to how you're showcasing your authority, how you're sharing your story and, you know, any events that you're speaking at because clearly it's working. Five, is that you've hired help for your content. Remember, you ascend this, right? So right now, you might have hired somebody to help you, but you're not getting five people each week asking how you can help them online. So that means you are not at number five, you are at number two. Whatever they're doing isn't working. To be honest, you should probably fire them because it's not very good, (laughs) okay? Um, And then (laughs) number six is you're often invited on other people's shows, podcasts, like consistently, as in, you know, two or three a week. That's what I'd be looking for here because then I would focus on actually scaling that because clearly you're a legit expert. When you go on someone else's podcast, you command the authority of their audience as well because you bring it with so much passion and power because you're so good at what you do. Great example is like, uh, I just, on one of the previous slides, I showed one of our members, her name is Mina. Mina has like 
1,500 followers or something, a very small audience actually. But she has so much authority. She's an energy healer and she literally gets invited all the time to speak on these stages like in front of hundreds of people because she has so much authority in her industry and what she does. And when she brings that online, people can clearly see, wow, this is like a true expert. Like she really knows what she's talking about. So she went from nothing to making 28K in a 28 day period, even though she'd never really sold this one product online before, right? So she's like at the stage where she has so much authority, she's ready to scale that. She's gonna hire someone to help her get onto more different podcasts with our system. Scale system number seven would be where you are a top three thought leader in your space. Where does everyone think they're at in audience authority and awareness? If you're ever not sure, you wanna go for the lower number and be really real. Like the aim is to be really honest with yourself so you can actually fix the right problem in your business. All the time we have clients coming to us like, yeah, I make 50K a month or I make 10 grand a month or 100K or 200K a month. And it's like, that's revenue. For example, they actually collected in their bank account like 20K, but they think they make 100K a month because they collected 20K, but there's 80K that the clients will pay them in the future. So they come in and they tell us that they're making 100 grand a month So immediately we're like, okay, cool. Like let's scale this, you know, team, ops, everything. But actually they're only actually making like 20K a month. Until you're honest with yourself, you cannot get the right help that you need. You must be honest with yourself. Next up, we're going to go into lead tap. This is our method in which we help businesses actually get a ton of leads in their business. So nothing would basically be no way to turn audience into own data. So you don't have a method to actually grab people's email or phone number. Everything's through social media, referrals, word of mouth, okay? Validate would be you don't have a way to repeatedly turn your audience into data. So you do have a way to turn them, right? You've got like a way to capture their email, you've got a freebie or something, a funnel, a website, but you're not repeatedly actually getting people opting into that thing. If that's you, then you're at a huge risk because the platforms can change just like that and if you don't own that data then what are you going to do for lead tap stabilize you have one method that brings in enough sales to reach your sales goals over a three-month period so if one month you're doing one thing and the next you're doing this thing and the next you're doing that thing then you're definitely not at the stabilized stage systematize would be your content is getting leads that become your clients with your system and remember you must ascend so if you have content that's getting clients that's cool but if it's all done through social media and you don't have like an email list and a phone number list you're probably at number one or number two actually instead we must always go to the lower number and not bs ourselves number five would that be you've you've hired help to run lead generation for you copywriter social media manager ads managers whatever it is that your method is to bring in clients and leads scale would be number six so if you want to turn it on for lead gen If you want to turn on your lead tap, you can, and you know your efforts will result in more quality leads. Okay, and number seven is that you can turn your lead tap switch on and off whenever you want without the risk of losing money because the system is so robust. Nurture, right? Either they buy or nothing. So you get a lead coming to you or you do an outreach and they reply and then they buy or it dies. That rhymes. <laughs> Buy or die, okay? I'll give you an example. You meet someone at a networking event or you have someone submit an application on your website or whatever and then you, you do a sales call and then there's no follow-up. There's no automation on the back end, etc. Validate would be you don't have a way to turn non-converting leads into sales. And the reason why this is invalidate is because you need to have, you need to validate a process to turn non-converting leads into sales. Number three, stabilize. For nurture, there is automated follow-up in place to convert interest into leads. So you're emailing them once a week, for example, once a day, you have an indoctrination series, maybe you have a virtual assistant sending messages to them, maybe you have a messaging flow that you send to people after a sales call in case they don't close on that call, whatever it is. Systematize is that, okay, you get a lead, And then you have like a fully automated process in place that acts as a safety net. For example, someone signs up for a webinar and then there's like a 
seven day like dialed in email sequence that actually converts into new sales calls because remember nurture is pointless if it's not actually converting if you're just doing it for the sake of doing it just because it's cool to have that's not good right so this actually is converting if it's beyond validate it must consistently be converting within kbis so for example with systematized you guys all pretty much everyone here probably went through like my dm automation for example on instagram Okay, well, whenever somebody then does that, it then goes onto a pipeline inside of our CRM. There's emails that start going out. Um, there's, you know, lists that we have so that an assistant can go through those lists and message everybody that didn't actually sign up for the webinar or whatever, because um, then they'll compare it to the sign up list versus the people that didn't sign up yet. Okay, it's all organized like that between automation and human input. Well, actually, no, the human input, sorry, is added at the delegate phase, but you would want to have the system set up and the process is dialed in of the messages that you want to send that you've proven yourself before you delegate that out to somebody else. Scale number six would be for every 100 opt-ins, you get a 10 additional sales calls thanks to your safety net or sales, right? If you're selling physical products. And then scale system would be your automations bring, that should say bring in at least 50% of your sales. Your automation, your nurture process, it brings in at least 50% of your sales. So let's say somebody opts into a funnel and then and let's say you get 100 people opt in and then from that 100 opt-ins, you get five clients. Well, two or three of them, let's say you phone up every opt-in and you have like an, an appointment set of phoning up every opt-in, two or three of them become clients from the set of phoning them up. Not because the webinar converted the, them into sales calls themselves or buyers themselves itself. I see nurture like a safety net. So that all of my marketing efforts that I put in actually comes out way higher because I have this nurture process in place. Because then I know with certainty that if I want to pour more leads into my lead tap, I don't need to worry about spending more money or putting more effort in, making more videos, more content because I have this nurture process in place that's going to convert. Now let's move into sales. This one's more simple, so I can kind of bosh through this one. So nothing is that you just don't have a consistent way to bring in new sales. Let's say sometimes you go to a meeting and you just kind of blag it. Sometimes you do an online presentation. Sometimes you make a proposal. Sometimes you take a sales call and do consultative selling, right? There's no consistent way to bring in new sales. You have no idea what you're doing most of the time, or you're just not even trying because you're afraid. That's a very common one. Validate would be when you're on the phone with a client, you close 30% plus, but the offer is bespoke. So you get on a sales call and every 10 sales calls you have, you actually close three deals, but you're making a bespoke offer every time. So clearly something that you're doing is doing good, but you actually need to validate a sales process that works repeatedly. Stabilize is that you close 50% plus, but there's a problem with show up rate. So sometimes people book sales calls with you and then they just don't show up or they book sales appointments with you, they don't show up. Systematize, you have a script that you're using. Remember that's the system. You're closing 50% plus and also you have a good sharp rate. Like you don't feel like the sharp rate is affecting you. Delegate is that you're collecting 70K in new cash per month. So now you can hire someone to take the sales calls for you. Let me be very clear right now. And Anthony, this is probably our biggest pet peeve in business, isn't it? Um, okay, imagine this, right? If you want to hire a closer, you want the best salesperson in the world, don't you? If you, were, if you would only take top tier talent in your business, type me into the chat. Okay, if you only want the best of the best, you know, the one that's actually going to go out there bringing in that money for your business. If that's you and you only want that good quality person, put me in the chat because I want to explain to you how important this is right here. If you're in a position right now in your business whereby you're already collecting 20K per month, 30K per month, 10% of 20 or 30K is like two or 3K a month. Do you see how unethical it would be to hire a salesperson to try and bring in someone and they only make that little amount of money? Or you get really, really bad people. I see people all the time trying to like outsource this over to like countries where the median income is really, really low. Trust me, you don't want to do that, okay? This is a very important role in your business. Front lines, who's the first person they speak to and they become your client, sales rep, okay? So anyway, 70K is a good amount of new cash per month to be collecting when you actually want to delegate that out to a sales team. One of the biggest things that we tell most of our clients is like, okay, we're going to fire your whole sales team because it causes them so much stress and they're better off just closing the deals themselves and delegating everything else, maintaining sales up until literally they can't anymore. Scale would be where your closer is collecting 100K per month in new cash, 
And then scale system is you have a team of salespeople closing 30%. So they, their closing rate is 30% and they each bring in 100K per month. One of the beautiful things about being a business owner is like oftentimes you're the best salesperson for the, your business. Personally, for me, is one of, I think, the most important things to maintain control over. Okay, let's get into loyalty. Boom, loyalty. So nothing is that like very few clients finish their original contract with you. Okay, they pay you money or they go on a payment plan and they never finish all their payments. That would be number one. Ranking two for validate for loyalty would be less than 10% of clients continue working with you after the initial contract. Let's say you have 10 clients. They finish their program or they finish the service or they do whatever they, you know, bought. Then only one of them buys again from you. For loyalty, stabilized would be two of them would buy from you. Or bring in referral. Okay, because you're kind of doing something right, but like the numbers are very low. Systematize number four would be five out of the ten continue after the initial contract or bring referrals. And the reason why I do all is because some businesses just aren't designed to like have you continue after the initial contract. Let's just say you install air conditioning in people's houses. They probably aren't going to buy again from you because they don't need it. But instead, what you want to be optimizing for is them to bring in referrals. Number five is then 50% continue and they bring referrals. So maybe this, because what this highlights is like, your business probably also has other products as well as the air conditioning installation and you know that physical thing. You also have like a cleaning service for the AC unit, right? Something else like that, okay? Scale would be that you have a formal referral and retention system in place in your business. So you know that, okay, client has gone through certain checkpoints in the way that you help them. And then at that moment, that's when you reach out to them for a referral. Or, you know, they get to X number of weeks towards the end. And then that's when you reach out to them to continue with you. And scale system is where every client refers at least two others. Let's go into operations. As a company, this is the one that we honestly focus on the least. Because typically, most of the members that we work with are not at this stage. If anybody is kind of at that stage and you like kind of, uh, you know, making good revenue and you really need support in this, just you can just reach out. We have a referral that we can, you know, if you actually need like coaching on this. But anyways. So operations, um, nothing is like you have no structure. Your business feels frustrating. If you don't have a team, okay, like you probably, you will be worrying about this a lot less. Let me just put it that way. Okay, so validate is you have no way to manage and complete tasks. No mission, vision or values. That'd be number two. I remember we ascend. So if you have like number six, but you don't have number two, it means you're on number two. Stabilize, number three. Business feels smooth, but the founder is doing everything more or less. Systematize is that you're able to plug team members into a system and they understand their roles and responsibilities. And they're very clear on exactly what they need to do. They have all the processes that you need to do to do it. Number five is you have an operations manager who uses a system to run the business. Number six is your entire team knows their roles and responsibilities and is committed to your vision and mission. And scale system is your team are all A players and your revenue is cre- increasing month on month. Alrighty, cool. Now I want to do a prioritization, okay? I want to help you prioritize what you need to focus on first, which would be your number one area of impact. So out of each of the seven areas of impact, which of the areas is the biggest bottleneck to your business? For example, if you fix this one thing, all the other problems will be easier. What would you say that is? If you fix that one area, every other area is going to be easier. I'm going to pick on someone, Robin, I'm picking on you to unmute yourself. Why do you believe that if you fix the lead tap, it's going to solve all your other problems? Let's hear from you. I feel like because it's my content that I'm not consistent with, I feel like I know what content to do, but I'm not doing it. And I almost feel like I don't have a solid lead gen in place that I know, for example, have running, have ran free like Facebook groups in the past have been so successful. Like I don't forward plan a lot of it. So I, I just know that from having done a few previously gens they've done really well when I do it well it it does well but they're not doing it consistent yeah I mean that's very good self-awareness right because you you do actually have a system that works you have a validated lead tab it seems from what you said but if we go one layer deeper okay something that I heard you say is like you're just not doing it so my question is why you're not doing it I actually think it comes down to a confidence thing of not 
not thinking that it's the right thing to do or not having the reassurance knowing that that's the right like content to be putting out for example like I don't have a strategy I haven't really looked into pillars you know I I just feel like albeit the content has been somewhat great maybe it's that I'm not sure if the content is the right stuff to be putting out to be to get a return from possibly got it got it so if you had like a system that you knew would work and that you were confident in and it was like a proven system how would that change things for you I'd be confident to show up like I would do I would do it because I know that I would be confident in knowing that the work I'm about to do and put in consistently for or I know and it's not going to take just like four weeks it'll take months but I'll have confidence to do it because I know it's going to be effective so I know that I'll put my time into delivering it right that makes sense yeah but what do you feel has prevented you from finding a system that you can trust so far probably not having the right advice or not working with the right person to to know what the right things to do are. I think I've dipped in and out of things like this in the past and I've just not had the best information or the best coaching and I'm just, that can also affect confidence I think as well. So I think if I was confident in what I was to deliver, I would deliver it. But it's just the knowing what to, what's best for my business and what's best to bring in those leads that's going to work content wise. Yeah. If you guys relate to that, um, I would like to hear who relates to Robin. If you can just put in the chat, like me, if you just type me into the chat, if you relate to what Robin's saying. Robin, I just want to show you, like, you're not alone in feeling this. And a lot, wow, like a, a lot of people are saying that they relate to. Is the bigger problem for you, or maybe there's a different problem? Is it like um, you've tried a different system in the past and it didn't work? And so then you were kind of figuring things out yourself? Or is it that you kind of felt distrusting in, yeah, like every system after that, so you kind of stopped trying? I would say a bit of both, to be honest. Um, I think I've tried, but probably not long enough to know. Um, yeah, and I think I think it's really hard because having a membership business, you're solely relying on membership numbers and sales. So it's almost like, I think I've tried before, like only to only twice, like with, you know, attempting a strategy. And then, yeah, probably that is just that I'm probably like, oh, I feel like here I go again. Like here I have to put my trust in something that I feel like I'm really naive or I buy into things really easily. And I'm like, oh God, I'm too scared to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I'm sighing and breathing heavy because like I relate to that a lot. Yeah. Um, And so I just want to, I'm, I'm hoping that like, the feeling of connection of the community here of other people that can relate to you helps you feel less alone in this because I know if you don't have friends that are entrepreneurs as well it can be very lonely and you can feel very you know isolated right so absolutely but yeah no I do I appreciate actually reading everyone's comments there I think it is nice to know because I think we get so frustrated by it and it's so easy to be so caught up and I'm not doing this I'm not doing enough I'm you know I'm not showing up enough and it's that not doing enough so yeah, it's almost quite comforting and reassuring that we are, you know, all facing those problems in a in a way as well. So yeah, I do appreciate that. Yeah, power of uh, being around like-minded people, is, it's it's huge. Um, so yeah, thank you so much as well, for Robin, for sharing that because you were very vulnerable and brave. So I just want to say like my hat goes off to you as well for sharing that. And how nice does it feel to know actually what you need to focus on? Because if right now, you know, we're still in that mindset where it's like, oh, I need to fix my leads and my social media and my sales and this person that I need to hire and my membership needs to be better. <laughs> you know, it's like you need to fix everything. But now you know that one thing that's going to fix everything else, right? So you can have directional efforts and clarity towards the thing that's going to make, you know, the biggest impact. Amazing. Thanks, Lauren. No problem. Let me pick somebody else. Sarah, I'll go to you. You said sales. Your numbers on a lot of other things were high. Um, so I want to go to you, Sarah, in figuring out with you what's making you feel like sales is a thing that is holding you by the most, but also that's not going to be your biggest area of impact. Yeah, well, you know, actually, after I said that, I realized the, the, the biggest months that we've ever had were actually when we had the most authority and the biggest month I ever had was after the piece in the LA Times and we 
signed 170 people in one month because of it. So I might sort of backtrack a little bit. We've been open for five years and, you know, we've gone through a lot with COVID and then with the economy uh, the past few months that things have just, we've seen a down shift in, in the Q1 and Q2 of this year. So I'm really sort of trying to look at what are those things. And I think sales is a really big one for us. Uh, I'm and not in my day-to-day at all anymore. So it would either mean going back into the day-to-day or really hiring people who um, are rock stars in the area. Totally, yeah. I mean, my one word of wisdom would be uh, when you do begin to hire those people is just making sure, like, you know, one of the things that's huge for us is, like, having, like, basically an online course of, like, sales or reporting that are proven... They have the system, they have the script, they can go through that consistently um, because you can hire the best salespeople in the world, but it's kind of that same conviction piece, right? What's your average like ticket size when a client works with you? Uh, I mean, it's really small. We're a franchise model, so ours is a membership based. So we have a monthly recurring revenue that's in, it's about $250 US per month. We met through, through Cole Hatter at, at the Thrive yeah ages ago right like yeah ages ago yeah so it's i have uh it's called osteo strong so it's a franchise in the wellness space okay. so okay. our model is you know we have to do large numbers of sales and hmm. keep them okay. for a long time yeah yeah because like with what you said about the authority piece that's pretty interesting for me because like the thing that's going through my mind especially with like the ticket price it's kind of like well what if you could instead of you know bringing on sales reps for selling something that price it's like i don't know how could you leverage your authority in a way to bring in so so many leads that that does the selling for you like that's where my mind is going because to be honest like the effort to add a sales team is going to be so much i i just don't even think the leverage is there i think the leverage is in like leveraging the authority to sell one to many totally and that's why i went back backwards when I first said sales because I, I think I agree with you because yeah. I know you know with with great PR people just walk through the door with their credit card in their hands saying sign me up you know because there's there's the social proof and third-party validation already there getting on other people's podcasts you know speaking at events different things like that building an army of people on your team who can go and do those things as well for you that's where I'd be looking okay sweet cool right, guys I'll move on because I've already been going for quite a long time Um, So what you highlighted is your area of impact. So remember, when you run your business by always prioritizing your number one area of impact, you're able to always keep up the momentum in scaling your business, okay? With that said, let's look at how to actually attack your number one area of impact to produce results. This is long again. I'm not going to go through these one by one because we will be here for too long. So please take a screenshot of this. And I'll just go through, because for a lot of people, the answer was lead tap. So I'll just go through the lead tap one, okay? This is what you guys saw before, okay? Now here's how to fix it. So that was before, here's how to fix it. So take a screenshot of this one. So we'll go through lead tap. So for example, if right now you're nothing with lead tap, you want to start posting top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel, and past the content. So what that means is whenever you're making content, you're putting on different hats. Every single week, you want to post one of each of these. Top of the funnel would be making sure to command authority and answer the question in people's minds, why the hell, why the bloody hell should I listen to this random person that I've just seen on the internet? For example, a lot of my my content, the proven line that we have for our top of the funnel content is I became a millionaire by the age of 23 without OnlyFans, daddy's money or multi-level marketing. Okay, this one just works for us. People find it funny and it's good for top of the funnel content and then we can go into value. Middle of the funnel is basically people that know who you are, but then you're going to give something away for free and you're going to give it really tactically. So you guys all got here because you saw middle of the funnel content. You saw me giving away something for free in some piece of copy, right? Bottom of the funnel content is just directly putting an offer out there. And pasta is where you share your story. The framework is problem, amplify, story, testimonial, aha moment, and action. So it's basically the framework that I use that my clients use to actually write copy. You start with a problem, you amplify the problem, you tell a story and the transformation, essentially, the testimonial. You make sure it has an aha moment inside and at the end you have an action, which is a call to action. 
or whatever action you want the client to take or the, the reader to take. If you are nothing right now on LeadTap, you need to start posting content four times a week at the, at, at the, the beginning. People will ask me, Lauren, what platform should I post on? This is a really bad question to ask. It is the most pointless question ever because why would you not take two extra minutes to copy and paste on every social media? I just don't understand why people don't do that. Anyways, validate two lead tap. If, if you're at number two on, uh, on lead tap, basically what you want to make sure that you optimize for is getting 10 sales calls a week from your organic lead tap. That's how you know your marketing message is validated or 10 sales, right? It depends what you do. Stabilize would be, um, that's your baseline minimum now. So you want to be getting 10 sales calls per week or 10 sales a week, three months consistently. That's how you know that you've stabilized. This is the minimum. You've got a new baseline threshold. And obviously as time goes on, what you do personally is you just change that number from 10 to 20, 50. Because right now, personally, if I got 10 sales calls a week, I'd be wondering what the bloody hell is going on in my business right now. Okay, so like you just change whatever that number is. Once you validate something and you increase the baseline threshold, that's when you know what's, you change it to that new number. Systematize is where you add tracking and standard operating procedures to run your lead tap in less than 90 minutes a week. So you know what's to post. This could also be through paid media. I personally prefer organic. Delegate is where you hire someone to run your lead gen once you have 10 sales calls a week minimum or 10 sales minimum. Number six is where you just ramp up your lead tap. So you basically do more, spend more, get in front of more people, whatever traffic source you want to use. And number seven is where you turn the switch on and off whenever you want without the risk of losing money. That's how you know that you're at number seven. So I'm not going to go through the rest of these things here. What you're going to want to do is take a screenshot of this, pay attention so that then after this training, you're going to be able to figure out how to actually fix your area of impact. When you highlighted that bottleneck, this needs to be your number one focus for the next quarter. We are right at the end of the quarter right now in the time that I'm doing this live. So stop adding things to what you're doing right now. Stop getting distracted and instead focus on that area of impact. The Impact Operating System is the blueprint you've been looking for to sell your knowledge and experience in a leveraged way online. My name is Lauren Tigner, founder and CEO of Impact School, and we've been trusted by more than 1,200 business owners to do exactly that, to take their knowledge, expertise, and experience, to package it up in a more effective way so that it will sell at scale online, such as Marianne, who at first, in 2021, made a total of $8,000 in profit. She had decent revenue, but her profit was really, really low. And once she installed the Impact Operating System, she's now consistently generating more than 100,000 euros per month. And she gets to spend way more time with her little one. Garrett Campbell here, he's on track to get a quarter of a million dollars per month. When he came to us before he had the Impact Operating System, he was only at 20 grand a month. We've also had members such as Harriet who started only around five or six grand a month. She was able to 5X her revenue and now she's living a life where she gets to travel, spend way more time with her family. Jazz was able to have a huge 130K launch. Archer added 20K per month in 90 days. Paj was also at literally zero, but he had a ton of expertise. And now he's making around 15 to 20K per month online. So with that said, it's important to know that the Impact Operating System does have some very specific requirements. So you need to fit one of these three criteria. So if you fit one of these three, there is an application below if that's all you need to hear. And you can just hit that and apply right now. So number one, if you're already selling your knowledge through courses, consulting, some type of courses or coaching or service offerings, but you feel like you're overworked, undervalued, and maybe you just aren't at the scale that you want to be, then this is potentially a very good fit for you. Secondly, if you do have a specific skill that you've mastered, you know the world needs it, but you don't know how to effectively sell it at scale online while ensuring that you truly deliver value to your customers, then this may be a very, very good fit for you. And finally, if you have already an audience on social media or an email list, but you can't figure out how to consistently and effectively monetize it, without ruining your brand image, reputation, or reach, then again, this is most likely going to be a good fit for you. But we do have a few additional requirements. So it's important you have one of these three criteria, but also you have all of these criteria. So first of all, you want to take that expertise. Maybe you're already doing this really successfully, but you want to leverage it into a simple, scalable business that gives you freedom. Secondly, you want the business to be profitable, but you don't want to sacrifice your freedom, health, or client results to get those profits. That's really important. And finally, you're committed to succeeding with this for the long term. Again, everyone who implements the impact operating system is working towards the same goal, 
profit, client results, and impact. So it feels like hanging out with friends, but with real business results. And if you're someone who doesn't have skills and you're brand new starting from scratch and your income potential is low because you aren't truly experienced or you're not willing to be the face of the business, you think it's going to happen overnight, you don't want to engage with others and you're an asshole, then this is definitely not going to be a good fit for you. We have a no asshole policy here at Impact School. And so how exactly this works is the Impact School OS trifecta. And so this is the step-by-step path, coaching and mastermind to consistently sell your expertise online in a leveraged way. Again, we say this word leverage often because leverage is really important to be able to live the lifestyle that you want to live, where you've mastered something, you're now able to support other people with that thing. And as a byproduct of that, you put out a ton of value into the world, you get a ton of value in exchange, aka money, and you're able to create freedom for yourself and your family in exchange for that. Because I believe that the word systems stands for save, yourself, time, energy, money, and stress. So we're all about systems here. And so we have systems for these three key areas, which is the impact school OS trifecta. So first of all, we have our authority and audience system. So this is all things lead generation, but also commanding authority online. So we have the systems to ensure that you grow and engage a niche audience full of targeted prospects that know, like, and trust you and convert them to a platform that you own and build authority through effective messaging so that you're not just reliant on the social media platforms. We will ensure that you're actually building your own email list, your own phone number list, so that you can always have your business run, even if all the platforms ban you or you get hacked or anything like that. We don't want you to be a victim of the system. Secondly, the CEO scale system. So this is where you build once and sell many times over. So we're gonna ensure that you have the system set up in your business, so that you package your knowledge into a scalable product that's actually going to allow you to consistently deliver value to customers without repeating yourself over and over again and making sure that this really gets results for them. Now, we sell it in a way that doesn't require appointment setters or teams of salespeople, and we're going to get this all set up for you within the first 30 to 60 days so that this is working for you and you know the way in which you can consistently get leads and convert them into clients and deliver results to those clients. And then finally is the impact operating system, the iOS, which is where, you know, maybe you've tried hiring some people in the past and they just don't do things as well as you want them to. Maybe you've set up some systems, some automation, but it breaks or it just doesn't feel consistent and your business feels a little frustrating. No one can do things as well as you can or your customers want more of you and people ask to get on sales calls with you and everybody just has a giant owner boner. And so you feel like you're super stuck in the business not able to do the things that are in your zone of genius. So instead, we set up the impact operating system to streamline all the areas of your business that you don't want to be in so that you can stay in your zone of genius and then bring A players into the team that actually buy into your business, drive client loyalty, and ensure that you're getting referrals from your clients so that you have multiple different ways to get leads. Firstly, externally from your outside audience, which will ensure that you have set up. And secondly, internally from your (laughs) internal referral systems that bring in real cash flow into your business. So again, if that's all that you need to hear, there is an application right below this video that you can click right now and apply. And I haven't even shown you the best bit because I haven't even shown you what you get when you actually join the Impact operating system. When you first join, the first thing that we do is you have a one-on-one coaching call to ensure that you have business model alignment and refinement. And we turn on your social media sales system and DM automation. So you can see here that Laura, she actually, this is literally the first post of hers that she had made in the group, but she had started adding the social media organic lead tap sales system into her business, which you can see you would have access to directly right here. Okay, so you have exactly what to write. There's tons of tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of ways, like literally the exact post for you to post on social media. And you can see here that in her very first post, she got seven responses from one post. And she says, if this is the tip of the iceberg, I want to find out what else could lie beneath the surface. And she actually had her first $9,930 day. So Laura, someone who's a little newer, but imagine, you know, tracking that revenue every day, you're going to be at 300K per month in no time. Obviously, that's just a one-off. She's not hitting this every single day, but I'm just showing you the type of thing that comes as a response of using our systems. So that's essentially what she turned on straight away. That's what you'll turn on straight away. And then we move into a 30-day cash injection. So this here is all the training that you'll go through before the 30-day cash injection so that, boom, you can start on the 30-day cash injection. And if right now, oh my gosh, bringing in a ton of cash right now isn't like the number one thing that's top of mind for you. Well, the beautiful thing about the 30-day cash injection isn't just to bring in cash. Cash cures all, right? 
cash flow is king. But the best thing is that when you run through this system and all the trainings that we have for you set up here, you find things that break. And then we see, oh my gosh, I got a ton of leads on social media, but none of them converted into sales. So then we know, okay, the problem right now isn't the lead generation. The problem is the lead nurturing and the sales conversion process. Or maybe it's just the way that you're positioned in the market. You don't have enough authority and people don't really understand what it is that you're selling. So then we know exactly what to fix. Once you know what's broken in the business from the 30-day cash injection, then we you have your board of directors. So your board of directors is a small group of people who have a similar revenue to you same goals and it's times that work for you. So don't worry about your schedule. We make sure that this works no matter your time zone, where in the world you are, your busy schedule because we understand that as a business owner, you're busy. And the board of directors, the monthly board meetings are where you meet and you talk about the problems that you've had in your business from the last month, all the things that went wrong and then you mastermind together on how to fix these problems and it's all facilitated by an executive coach from the Impact School team. And then you project ahead as to what you're going to be working on for the next 30 days you commit to the things that you're going to work on and then you come back the next 30 days and you say, okay, last time I committed to this, here's what I got done. I didn't get this done because of this, et cetera, et cetera. And it holds you accountable because you know that you're going to have to show up to that board. But that's not the only support that you get. as a monthly special guest masterclass and of course a Q&A. So you can see here that one of the masterclasses that we had very, very, very recently was this here which is actually from the same guy that runs the social media of Grant Cardone, Alex Hormozzi, their short form content. So this is a 90 minute masterclass. It is insanely powerful, okay? And it literally shows you how to go viral and get millions of views. You have two scale up meetings every single week that go on that you can see are inside of our calendar right here. So there are all these meetings that you can show to you. These ones are optional. The board meetings are the ones that are required. and. You can see here, this one's a weird time for me because of my time zone right now, but all the times are going to be perfect. We've made it fit for no matter where you are in the world. But again, these ones are optional. And if you can't make it, you can always submit before and you can get it answered. And then you can always watch the replay. And of course, if you have questions throughout the week, you can just go straight into the community. Where, you know, it's, you, I already showed you, it's very, very responsive. Simultaneously, we also have a weekly automations and AI workshop, a bi-weekly live training that we're delivering on one of the seven areas of impact, which are these areas and the community. So there's also inside of our training, we have all of the systems for the seven areas of impact for you to go through. You can obviously put somebody from your team through them as well. Product, authority, audience and awareness, lead tap, lead not just sales, client loyalty, operations and team. And you get a free in-person event live once per year. So every single year that you're a member, you get a free in-person event and big discounts to other events. So one of the most interesting things is I was speaking to a guy a few weeks ago who has sold four businesses and he's been really, really successful. But because he hasn't yet started all the online stuff and helping other people scale their businesses, that's what he wants to do. He said that he didn't feel qualified to actually apply for the mastermind. And what was interesting is I was just on Facebook last night and I saw one of our members, Claudia, had made this post saying, how did I even get an invitation? Some people are making or have made over 100 million plus his little old me at just one mil. How do I even qualify? And she's already made a million, you know? And so I think it's interesting because at every level, we always have doubt in our minds as to whether or not we're capable, whether or not we're worthy. But ultimately, if you fit one of the criteria that I had laid out before, then this is going to be a good fit for you. And all it is right now that's holding you back is your mind. And so with that said, don't be nervous. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. You're going to be able to rub shoulders with people like Deb, who has taken two of her own companies to 100 million. Corey, who has 800,000 plus subscribers on YouTube. But there are many other members who are in a similar spot, most likely where you're at right now. Because if we go here and we look at all of these introductions, there are many, many people who are probably at the same stage as you. So we can see Nathan, he's in Brisbane. He has a day-to-day -day role helping construction companies grow through digital marketing. He's working at this company, right? So he's on people management and sales. He has a job. But he has this podcast as well and he has this passion. He wants to have this business of his own, but he's really successful in his craft, but he hasn't yet just moved it online for himself. And then, of course, we have people like Jerry, right? Jerry is making more than 500K per year doing health consulting. But we have people of all different other areas. Paul last year made about 400K, but he's also right now in the very early stages of his online stuff. And then we have other members such as Charlie, who already has a really successful online business making around 15 to 20K per month, but he has hundreds of thousands of followers online, but he wants to get to 50 grand a month. 
So the beautiful thing is that there are some people who are really skilled online, some people who are really skilled in person, some people who are just really skilled in their craft and now they want to get it online and scale the business. And so if you're having any doubt at all, if you apply, then we will decline you and send you some free training to help you right now. If it's not a good fit, it doesn't hurt to apply. And if you're accepted, then you need to make sure that you take action quickly so that we can actually get you in and get you started. Because right now, instead of paying 20K for the year, we can get you in for just 1.2K every four months. Also, there's no long-term commitment. So if you want to get started and you don't like it after the first month, then you don't have to continue. But we will say this really is a three-year roadmap. And ideally, you want to go into this with a mindset that you're going to come in for the first year. And if you want to pay in full for the year as well, it's just 10K for the first year. And of course, when you stay and you've been in for six, when you've been in for a year, and if you pay in full for the year, you get access to that first event for free instead of actually paying for the tickets, which will be selling for 3.5K. So to apply, all you need to do is submit your application below this video. We will review your application. If we think it's a good fit, you'll get an email and text with steps to join. And if we don't think it's a good fit for you right now, we'll give you some free resources to get you started. So if you receive texts, phone calls from an unknown number in the next 24 hours, then it's most likely from us to be able to have a good relationship, a relationship where we can get stuff done together, where we can move you forward and get you real results, then you need to make sure to actually respond back to that quickly because that's a signal to us that you're going to be somebody that's easy to work with. So make sure to apply right now. The application will take you around five minutes or so. Give it as much information as you can. And I look forward to seeing you inside of our community.